All right, YouTube, it's the Shadow King, King Nazaru, here with a review for Rosario Vampire 2, Chapter 11. Uh, so, when we last left off, um, Misery is telling Skune that the Snow Woman can only reproduce between the age of 17 and 25 years old, hence uh, their dwindling population due to the climate, uh, 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 due to their uh, climate environment and having to adapt that. That's pretty much the consequence of it. Which pretty much makes their situation very tragic. Uh, she further goes on to say that there's an elder who chooses a mate for the snow woman uh, who is single at 17. Uh, and Misere once again asks Skune to make love to her tonight so she could have her uh, have his child. And uh, for her to be bound to him, so she wouldn't have to uh, be forced to an arranged marriage. Elsewhere, Kurumu is uh, using Surara's gun to fight the Yeti, and Yukri uh, believes that this is the monster that Surara warned about. No, really? Uh, however, the Yeti's uh, body seems to instantly heal. Uh, from Kurumu's onslaught, uh, Kurumu is concerned that uh, Misere is having sex with Skune at the moment and tells the uh, Yeti to leave uh, or she'll kill it. Uh, but it says uh, she is wrong and it's not the one they're looking, uh, not the one he, uh, the Yeti is looking for. So then the Yeti fades into the wind and escapes from the girl. Uh, we go back to Skune uh, trying to cover up Misere uh, to preserve, uh, I mean, preserve his morality over his sexual urges. Whip! Uh, Skune uh, has trouble understanding the arranged marriage law, uh, to which Misere retorts that. Uh, the Elder, also known as the Snow Priestess, uh, is a person who can hear God's voice. So, both vampires and snow women worship God. Go figure. So, anyway, it's because the uh, Snow Priestess can hear God that she feels that the mates she chooses for the snow woman are the uh ordained by divine uh intervention so uh the snow and she even goes so far as to say that the snow priestess's prophecy has saved the snow women be, uh from going extinct before and their and that their land is the last stronghold thus they obey her snow Misery uh, then says uh, she wants to be bound to Skune and uses the Shiraiki flower to put Skune in a trance so she can have sex with him, regardless if the girls forgive her for doing so. Skune sees, uh, sees Misery crying and then starts wondering why. Uh, Misery and Skune are suddenly caught, are caught in an avalanche. But it turns out to just be the uh, be a huge gust of snow uh, that is created by the snow priestess, who looks nothing like an elderly woman, but more like a woman in her thirties. She looks rather well for someone who's over a hundred years old. Uh, see, uh, and she decides to take Misere with her. Uh, Skune asked to let her go, but the Snow Priestess, um, uh, uh, denies that, and Skune falls unconscious. And Skune, when he wakes up, he is found, he finds himself, uh, by the girls, and wakes up in their care. The girls, uh, say that Misere is still missing, and Sarara, Shiraiki, says the the snow priestess abducted uh, her daughter and affor has informed her of everything that and that everything is fine. The priestess uh thought Skune was attacking Misery 
and she felt she was rescuing uh, her from him. Um, this upsets the girls uh, that Misery tried to seduce Skune. Uh, Sarara uh, excitedly wants to know just how far Skune went with Misery, hoping that he meant to have sex with her so she could have grandkids and thus continue the, the species. But to her disappointment, Skune says that he has not uh, he has not done anything with uh, with Misery. Well, Sarara says the Snow Priestess never should. It's odd that the Snow Priestess came because she never shows herself to the uh, to the other Snow Woman. But but it's very strange that she did so for Misery. Uh, the Snow Priestess welcomes Misery to her shrine. Uh, and Misere starts blaming her for interrupting her chance at having sex with Skune. But the Snow uh, Priestess says that it wouldn't have mattered because uh, Misere and Skune are predestined not to be. Destiny, everybody. It's a dick. So, anyway, the Snow Priestess says uh, she was to uh, change into a Yeti. Yeti, so she could find the prophesied girl. So, God told the Snow Priestess to transform into a Yeti so she can find Misery? Well, who am I to question God's uh, plan? I'm a Christian, so I'm, I'll am i roll with it. Um, then a man arrives named Fujisaki. Uh, and the Snow Priestess tells Misery that this is to be her fiancé. Uh, a bit of a spoiler alert. Fujisaki is not this guy's name. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but trust me, this guy is very, very, very important to this story. And we'll, and when we get to how just how important he is... Anyway... Uh, Fujisaki is a uh, part of an executive uh, organization in the human world, and that uh, Snow Pri Priestess says Misere will save her kind by marrying Fujisaki. Fu um, and thus Fujisaki uh, Miyabi introduce himself to Misere. We then go, go back to Surara explaining that the ritual is a ploy for the priestess to give her prophecy to the uh, snow women who are about to en enact it. Uh, this shocks the girls because uh, they uh, they realize they would have not have had uh, a free will choice in who they would have married. Uh, but Sorara says that they should probably participate anyway just for the heck of it. Uh, then she goes on to, to deduce her, her daughter Misere wanted to fight uh, the prophecy to be Skune's lover, but him whipping out worrying it. Sor uh, Sorara uh, mentioned that uh, that in their culture, survival is more important than romance. But Skune disagrees and believes that Misery uh, wanted help, not just to have sex with him. Uh, this leads Kurumu to go into an outburst, saying that Misere betrayed them and she isn't their problem. Uh, but later, she says, uh, until Misery apologizes, she won't allow her to get married and live a comfortable lifestyle. And they, and they go off to rescue her. Well, that's one way to express friendship. Uh, Fujisaki uh, says he wants to... I uh, says he likes likes the Snow Priestess' perfect order through uh, prophecy, and uh, this perfect order is the reason why he wants this land. And Fujisaki also says that he wants Misere to be perfect, and demands uh, she lose the lollipop, since it's kind of irrelevant uh, due to the lollipop only keeping her cool in warm areas, but she's already in a cold place, so there's no point to it. Uh, but Misere refuses to, to get rid of it because it symbolizes the time she spent with Skune. So, is it this? Oh. 
was the same lollipop? Anyway. Uh, then we cut to Fujisaki kissing Mizure while, while promising nothing bad will happen. And then he rapes Mizure. What? 